Hello, it's George Leoniak and welcome to New Geometry. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the vision of New Geometry and I'm going to really summarize that in kind of an inspirational story that uh, came about this week in relationship to one of my apprentices who shared me some of his discoveries in relationship to this form, the deltoidal hexacontahedron, which I shared in my previous video, the ICOSA connection. So the majority of this uh, video is going to be about his discoveries, which do really encapsulate the vision of new geometry. And a very small portion is just going to talk about some of the incredible offerings that I have uh, presenting to get you engaged with actively engaging and doing the sacred geometry. So let's uh, jump into my screen share here and I'll walk you through a little bit of Hunter's discoveries. Now, Hunter and I uh, did a video previously after uh, the uh, apprentice, apprenticeship that he was part of this past spring. And I would highly recommend uh, checking that one out, an excellent video, Sacred Geometry Ignites, Ignites a Spark of Light Within. Uh, and that's with uh, Hunter Hughes and myself. And, uh, you know, that's, that, that title really, I guess, does encapsulate what the vision of uh, new geometry is and the potential of sacred geometry. And really what my hope is that anybody that engages with sacred geometry, whatever form it is that you, uh, you know, techniques that you work on, it has the potential to spark that light within. And uh, it just so happens that's what I'm experiencing with the golden circle diagrams and what I'm sharing with others. It really starts to have a lot of sacred geometric concepts come to light, you know, with inside and then starts to click. It makes sense. You're interrelating and developing a relationship with these patterns. So Hunter, uh, you know, after watching my video, he did the apprenticeship of eight weeks and then you know, he can just look at my videos now and start to see the pattern recognition of what this golden circle template, this golden circle seed of life, which I use in a variety of uh, pentagon or square view or twofold, uh, fourfold uh, orientation, but adding these golden circles to these patterns really adds uh, so much uh, depth and richness and uh, complexity uh, and simplicity at the same time to some of the most uh, simple, uh, I I iconic uh, sacred geometry designs that we're used to. So he sent me this image because he was trying to figure out how I drew this form, which I'm going to show you pictures of in a minute, because it incorporated two phi ratio circles here, this uh, outer one and inner one here. And he was trying to discover how I did that. And this is what he came up with. And, you know, I'll get to the story a little bit later. But when I first looked at it, I was like, huh, that I did not do that at all. So um, we'll get to that. But let me just describe this is what the form was built off of. Now, here's the here's the circle drawing of the regular golden circle seed of life. And you can see the two larger circles uh, the large one and the, uh, the other one on the inner portion here, just outside the regular seat of life circle. And I had to do that in this drawing, which kind of broke the regular symmetry because I was making a rhombic tricontahedron and an icosi dodecahedron compound. Now these two are dual forms of one another and they're gonna come together to kind of fuse together to make this compound of the two forms. Just like this rhombic tricontahedron is a compound of the platonic solids, dodecahedron, phi ratio form, with the icosahedron, that makes this rhombic tricontahedron. So now I'm going to do the same thing with both of these forms. And what emerges through that kind of union of those two is this form, which I actually could not find a picture of or drawing of anywhere, because all you really have to do is just connect the lines. And now you have this version of the deltoidal hexacontahedron, which I'm going to come up with a much cooler name with at some point. Um, but this is a 60 kite form. And this is the first dra drawing that I did of it uh, through that fusion based on this circle template. But these circles, uh, the larger ones, had to be constructed, as I'll show in just a moment, to get the right distance between this red hexagon and the icosidodecahedron form. 
So in my previous video, there's a little plug for the Icosa connection because you know I, there's only like 150 views on it and it is complex geometry. The new geometry that I'm presenting, K and EW geometry, I spend weeks, months, months at a time on working on these ideas and it may, it may be some of the more complex, uh, interrelated, totally interconnected geometry that you might uh, find that you can actually hand draw. Um, now, this uh, introduced a totally new view of the icosahedron, so I can make this compound out of six. And this led me on a kind of discovery all listed, you know, in detail in the other video, the icosa connection. Um, it, it led me to this internal hull of the, uh, the, the five compound, the six compound, actually wound up being this internal hull of this icosidodecahedron rhombic tricontahedron compound, which is this. So that, that actually has five icosahedron that are making these vertices within this. And this is the very simple golden circle technique with little mini golden circles and a little rosette around the form here with the seed of life at the center. You know, um, um, once, the, once you understand this pattern language, and this is what new geometry is about, is working within the patterns that exist already integrating, adding phi ratio circles in different places. And my faith and trust is so much in phi circles that I can pretty much find just about any form before I know that it even exists in there. I, mean, I wouldn't say any form, but a lot of the geometric sacred geometry forms that you would find in uh, many of the, uh, the polyhedra books or sacred geometry books, you can start to discover with these golden sacred, uh, gold, golden circle, design patterns. It's just amazing how it works out. So this is uh, the completed hexacontahedron. Now here is the uh, drawing. This is all from the one hexagonal perspective. Here's the seed of life. It's got the 60 kite faces. You're only looking at 30 because the other 30 are behind here. And now this is showing you where the vertices of these two are on the non seed of life circles. So that's a bit of a trick to figure out how to find those in here. And so this is the method I came up with and then I sent it to Hunter. I'll show you that slide in a second. You know, I had to add, um, here, here's the icosidodecahedron. You could see where this is showing up and the blue lines are that. You know, and the red lines are the uh, rhombic tricontahedron and then the black lines are the kite faces and these are crisscrossing in each kite face. So for instance, here's a black kite face. Here's the crisscross of the two edges of the floor. So Hunter, you know, he sent me this and I didn't check it out right away. I just uh, sent this back to Hunter because I wasn't sure if this was gonna work. I mean, uh, definitely trusting in, uh, in what Hunter produced there, but I just sent him back uh, this uh, quickly to say, well, I took the central golden circle here and I, what I discovered was that I, if I placed them on the outer golden circles up here, I could create a little vesica right here. And if I make a line through the vesica using the classic vesica design, that would give me the end of the circle right there. So I need two circles, uh, you know, with that measurement, draw the line. And so that's what I did within the golden circle diagram to figure out the right distance uh, to create that uh, circle. And then I had to add another phi ratio circle on the inside by doing the golden circle construction to get that. So there's a couple steps in there. So after I sent that, I said, you know, I better check out what uh, Hunter set, uh, has sent me here. And, and I tell you, it was really made my day to uh, discover that his, uh, exploration just from watching my video and being starting to be very familiar with how the golden circles work that he could find um what took me you know a couple of weeks and, and actually when he probably a week of trying to figure out how to draw that he he kind of discovered this in a like totally unique way based on these intersections of the golden circles and and when he sent this to me I was like, what did he do here? Like, what is this little T that he made here? And uh, what is this length gonna be doing here? So he lined it up, you know, where these golden circles intersect, there's always a little mystery to discover. Nothing is like just random about this drawing. 
um, it's all interconnected. So he drew a line just connecting these points where this golden circle intersects the larger one right here. And then he drew this line here. And that's the line I wasn't sure what to do with. But then I said, well, I guess I'll just pick it up and put it on my uh, central point of using my compass, just compass jump over to the center here. And then actually that ended up being the outer golden circle, which was just, uh, first of all, I was like, wow, that's the outer golden circle. That's the one that is out of the normal pattern of the golden circles. And Hunter just found it really easily with this little T. And then I was like, well, what's up with about this line? Did he actually get the, the inner golden circle without having to do uh, the method of reconstructing the large, you know, golden circles around this and the, the other techniques that I use? Well, he, he lined it up on this golden circle and where this blue circle intersected this golden circle, he drew the line across and that point where it crossed this axis line here, gave him the uh, the correct distance of the phi proportion between the red and the blue circles here. I mean, that was that completely made my day that he went about this in a completely different methodology that I did, simplified the method that we can find these two golden circles so easily just with the basic golden circle template. And now anybody can easily draw this pattern. This is Hunter's very incredibly crisp line drawing, completely hand done. I had never even myself drawn this uh, by hand. It all been on the iPad construction. So this is the first time uh, of a hand drawn version of this, uh, this, this, this form, which is now the, the compound. It's like a, it's the next step up from the rhombic tricontahedron, icosahedron, dodecahedron compound. This is the both of those in the rhombic tricontahedron with the icosahedron dodecahedron. So we've gone from a thirty phase form to a sixty phase form. And this Hunter's probably I'm imagining done the first hand drawn version of that with. Uh, sacred geometry techniques based on the seed of life, adding the golden ratio circles to it. So maybe someone else has hand drawn it. Like I said, I couldn't find a picture of it at all. Um, but you see that little experience that I'm describing or the, the, the path that the form led Hunter with really no guidance for me other than doing the eight week apprenticeship. So I could share a little bit about the golden circles, just, took him on his own journey of exploration to go outside of the box, to draw the lines, to connect the lines that would uh, follow his own guidance, his own intuition, let this pattern speak to him, to uh, reach into that light and come about with his own method and did the first ever hand drawing. But, you know, of course, Hunter is very much into this. And it amazes me because, you know, he's in his early 20s, right? So I have a 20 something years on them. And I've only been doing sacred geometry this intensely. Of course, I've been a keen observer of nature my pretty much entire life. Um, but for like five years, right? So, you know, I'm only really working within that time frame. And now someone in this younger generation is already starting to work with this and that is kind of like the fruit, the flowering of what the new geometry uh, vision has in mind is what's going to happen when younger generations start to pick this up and, and run with this material to unlock more and more discoveries. Uh, I'm just really thrilled to see about what that potential might, uh, how, it, how expansive it might be and how that will kind of change our world. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Hunter also did the icosahedron drawing from a new uh, perspective that I showed in that same video, because remember there were one, two, three new version or the same version. These are just 
oriented a little different. So I show just a brief slide, one photo, one, one image in there that shows the circle template. And because, you know, like I said, Hunter, you know, just all he had to do was just uh, understand the basics of what I had shared with the golden circles to see how they work. You could see his light circle drawing in the background. And also I had not done this one hand drawn yet um, because I'm working so fast with the new discoveries. Um, you know, he took, he, he's, he's did the hand drawn version here and he did it so you could see the back of the form. And in this cool version, the icosahedron is sitting on its uh, faces uh, on the bottom and the top. So we're looking at it kind of from a side view. So this was the drawing that I showed in the video and then he could find out how to construct the rest. And then of course, the next step within this whole journey, uh, you know, is to make our 2D versions of the templates that we have here, because these are the sacred geometric patterns of creation that hold the platonic solids that we can actually use as a blueprint of creation, because, uh, you know, different atomic structure and uh, in our blood cells and in our cells. I mean, this sacred geometry is in all things. So now we're pulling into this, you know, divine template here, pulling out these forms and now creating them. So, you know, the next step is to figure out what these kite faces are, the measurements of those kite faces. And, you know, one thing to look for in these drawings is when you're going to that step, you need to discover which of the edges are the true length edges. And in this, there's only a few of them. There's, you know, the, this, this one here, because they're not distorted by the curvature of the form. Now that gives us the icosi dodecahedron edge. And this one will give us the rhombic tricontahedron edge, the red one. So that's this red and blue. And we could figure out where to divide that red if we draw this line across here. And then that will tell us, depending on what this measurement is, if we made that an inch, this would give us the remainder of that. So that's just kind of a quick little lesson for the new geometers who are out there who are starting to work with these patterns and wanting to uh, create the forms that they're drawing is to find the common edge that is true to a flat plane in front of you. Um, okay, so this is now, that was the, you know, inspirational story that uh, just, you know, was so thrilling to me to see kind of the, the beginnings of the fruition of what the vision of new geometry is. And it is uh, very much a part of like everybody's uh, individual spark uh, of light of individuality that's going to kind of ignite through working with sacred geometry and any sacred geometry. This is just the sacred geometry that I'm offering with. And uh, you know, through my own experience, I know how expansive it can be. And personally, I feel it is the next evolution from my small perspective of adding to the evolution of sacred geometry uh, in a collective pattern. So I'm really enthusiastic to share as much of this as I can. And I think the really important thing that I feel like I'm going to be starting to focus on as much as I can is how to develop community around geometry and sacred geometry and uh, new geometry. Because the community of geometers is where we come together. The people who have that calling to be into sacred geometry, to define oneself uh, as a geometer, whether you want to take on a label or not, but to feel that inner calling that you love to create, that you love the designs, that you love the drawing. You might not be drawing them now, you might be gravitating them to, but you feel that that might be kind of a path to follow, a trail that's kind of beckoning you to come on. Well, that might be an inner calling to kind of step into learning to work with the form, start to understand them in a new way, start to understand the drawings, because that's going to take you on your own trail of discovery that will be just like Hunter's doing or the other apprentices that I've had. And having a kind of collective container where Geometers can kind of come together, like in my New Geometers Facebook group, where they're sharing their inspiration and enthusiasm for geometry. And there's so much sacred geometry out there. And also a community around people who are specifically exploring what 
I'm presenting with this geometry and sharing that pattern language too. So my emphasis is definitely on community, community building and really um, shining the light on all those uh, you know, amazing souls that are out there that are inspired with sacred geometry. And I love to highlight all my apprentices work through and have many videos in the new conversations that describe their experience of the apprenticeship and just their own personal journey with sacred geometry. So I'm hoping to foster and build that connection and a kind of mentoring community that goes on. Now, this is really the only offering that I wanna kind of talk about um, that if you're feeling inspired, and this is definitely not some sort of uh, commercialized plug here, but I feel it's important to realize that if you wanna get into this sacred geometry, this is an option that I've presented that I think is very affordable and uh, easy access point, which I'm just calling the new geometer at the Patreon site. It's a $9.99 per month. And there's already all this content. I'm not even doing tiers in, in there. I had five dimension tiers before. I've simplified everything to just this one tier that uh, is really jam packed with content. And content is gonna be continuing to come out each month. So let me just describe this a little bit to you. Uh, of what's going on here. Now, I've got my uh, monthly sacred geometry drawings, some of them that you see in presentations, other ones that you don't. I usually put out one post a month there. Every month I'm working on a about four or five pages to my guide to sacred geometry, New Geometry's Guide to Sacred Geometry. I already have seven uh, posts in there and probably almost about 20 something, almost 30 pages already written in there that take you from the beginning of sacred geometry. You haven't even touched a compass or a ruler, at least in the very uh, recent times, and takes you through a process of how to start drawing sacred geometry with all sorts of little lessons and working up to working with the golden circles and the seed of life and how to draw the dodecahedron and icosahedron and all those sort of things. That's all gonna be in there and I'm adding to that. There's also a video connected to that. So I walk you through a step-by-step -step drawing video instructions. There's also seven posts there. And a monthly class, a drawing session for one hour, live Q and A mini section on the drawing. So there's 27 posts in there already. And I have created, besides in addition to the New Geometers Facebook group, I've now uh, created a, a special learning group community, which I'm calling the New Geometries Golden Circle Study Group on Facebook, which, you know, if you're accessing through Patreon or apprenticeship or any of my one-on-one -on -one mentorships, which you can learn about those down here at the bottom, those are the links there. Those are uh, this little study group, which has, you know, some of my apprentices uh, already in it, uh, is specifically for people who are interested in an exploration of new geometry drawing techniques with this golden circles that I have uh, been working with. So uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 which I think is a, a, a excellent offer to get introduced in the sacred geometry at a very reasonable uh, energetic exchange for uh, the energy that I, life force energy that I put into working on delivering the material that you're seeing in the videos. And, and I don't wanna just be the deliverer of that information. I want you to experience it and do it yourself and see where it takes you because I imagine there's much, much more that I'll be learning from all of you through that shared experience together, just like Hunter illustrated in this uh, presentation. So that's it for this uh, short video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely a quite a different video. Uh, just saying that the, the next, where I'm going next is um, I'm gonna talk about that pattern that was there at the New Geometers, the one I was talking about, the Vision New Geometry. I have a lot to say about that. That's a very, very exciting pattern. I'm calling it the new creation because there's all those platonic solids that are in it. And it's very, uh, next step for uh, some interesting pattern to introduce into sacred geometry. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, please at least check out the Patreon. Please uh, explore, uh, please subscribe to this channel and join the New Geometers Facebook group. 
and I look forward to connecting with you uh, maybe in one of the offerings that I present in the future. So thanks so much for being here. Much love and appreciation. Until next time, peace.